Genie grind, I watch him get it rich, huh? Remember when I said I hit a lick, huh? I don't really wanna fight a bitch, what? Willie when I made another hit, okay, like Prada, I'm a motherfucking kid, huh? Louis, I'm a motherfucking hip, huh? Curry, how I dunk, no switch, hey, fuck it, gonna fuck that bitch, hey, if you ain't gon' fuck with me, you a dumb fuck, uh? Put up a hit, up, I feel like one punch, uh? Look at my bank and I'm getting dumb rich, uh? And I'm gonna count it up till a hundred, uh? Hello world, I am What If Studia, and today we are retconning a little bit of what I had said before. This time, the heroes will not have seen Nafumi. They will instead be on different missions. Very important ones that they were sent off to right as they got word that Nafumi was inside the capital. But Matsu Motayasu was a little bit more stubborn to stay inside the capital, not seeing why he has to go do these, these missions all of a sudden, for no reason. So we shall continue in the middle of the scarred battlefield. Now Fumi holding Motayasu inside of his hands. The battlefield was now heating up to a boiling point. Merlin had entered into the battle, blocking several shots with his... Um, his just reflecting shield as he reflects all of them back with a rage he had never seen out of Merlin. He was having sort of his own fun in the, in the moment. However, he was a pragmatic person. He would never think like that. He, he, he was like, Nafumi, we have to get the fuck out of here. As Nafumi, uh, Nafumi says, but how? We don't have a teleportation um, skill like, like mine. We need another way. As Lily, he can see Lily um, in the middle of the crowd shooting several arrows out as the, all three of the triplets um, uh, are all firing concessive blows um, straight into Mine's side. However, she's swiftly healed as they are blown back by, a go by the golem that attracts their attention. The battle is just a shit show now. As now Fumi trying to block M uh, Motayasu from getting hurt from all sides, he ends up using uh, the, you know, spirit master, the spirit, you know, spirit king's gate, which is his ultimate defensive move. However, it, um, it, it puts the spirit king's life on the line, something that he had has had as a passive ever since he got the game, the spirit king. Fuck. We need a way out. As now Fumi looks around, he sees nothing but surrounded in almost a hundred of these guys, these sorcerers, all casting fireballs at them. There was something. There had to be something. And then... A bone dragon floats down from the sky. Could this be a new hope? Suddenly, it's just so heavy. They can feel the thick air grow heavier. Just a breath of dark, malicious energy and molasses seeps down into the valley that consists of all the, the battle going on. It seemed to roll over, containing all of the different substances that you'd need to make such a horrid gas, making all the wizards choke and try to eat the air. They, they were suddenly caught off guard. A man standing on top of it, his royal garb um, lying down to the left and right of him, it seemed to almost lurch off of his body. Was it another necromancer? Necro um, now Fumi looks up with eyes full of grimace. A hope. What does that even mean anymore? But then it stands down. The man on top of it looks down to them and suddenly it seems so familiar. It was... Your brother. As Lily says, What the hell are you doing here, brother? As he said, I, I couldn't walk away, ma'am. Sister, you left. You must let me do this for me. N not only you, for me. I have to feel like I am some use to my, my civilization, so come on! Let's get out of here. She says, I'm staying. And Marilyn says, yes, me too. And Nafumi says, no, you guys are coming. We'll buy you time. Just go. As, Nafu as Motayasu uh, actually knocks out Nafumi right before he can, he can say no to all this. He's like, he was always a stubborn one. 
he throws him onto the onto the dragon and gets up onto it as they fly away with um, the prince. They soared into the air as it uh, it started to feel almost magical up into the sky. So why do we need to retreat? Matayasu asks. Because my my magic it's it can only be used for so long. I am very unskilled to be using this dragon, you understand? As several uh, several thousand arrows start to ricochet from the from the grounds um, below them, what a surprise attack from the military! Um, do weave as he he commands the the dragon. However, it, his low skill and his underpowering it, it doesn't listen to him fully, and is late to dodge out of the way. It's struck in its wing as they fall, skyrocketing down to the ground. They smash as Mata, Matayasu um, jumps off of it using Spearfall, something that he had learned a long time ago to stop his descent. Um, grabbing onto Naofumi and grabbing onto the, the collar of uh, the prince. The prince, however, was out of MP. He swiftly fell off to sleep too. Matayasu less, um, leaves both of them onto the ground on this thick patch of, of grass next to a highway that kept that crept into the woods. It was overlooking the whole valley. So, now for me and him are sitting by the fire that Matayasu had cooked up. Now the prince was knocked out cold. And in an MP potion, which Matayasu never keeps around him. As he looks up to the night sky, he sees explosions on the horizon. People just raving and destroying anything around them. Is it true the end? The end of the heroes? It can't end like this. After he had finally got back with the shield hero, he thought everything would go great. Perhaps that was selfish of him. Perhaps it was foolish of him. He starts to hear a rumbling behind him on the road. A cart coming down, a royal cart. Several people uh, around it, defending it. Is that? No, it can't possibly be. They told me that the queen was out and would not return in years. Is that possible? As he gets up and waves, um, walking in front of it, the knights hold their spears up to his uh, up to his throat as he says, "Huh, ironic, but no, I I'm the spear hero. Um, I believe that you were escorting the queen, right?" Or her princess, at least. As a head pokes out of the window, it was a red-haired queen. Her crown tiny on her head, and yet it felt it commanded so much pressure with it. She said, oh yes, yes, come in, um, spear hero. She looks to her left and sees the shield hero also on the ground. She says, my god, is that the shield hero? She um, orders the guards to pick him up and put him into the cart, as they do so, with also the prince also joining him in the cart. However, the prince barely waking up, Naofumi also. Naofumi looks up to see the, the queen brimming in happiness, as she says, To think I would have so many royals and heroes in the same cart! I'm just... I'm so proud. Of what, ma'am? Mafumi asks. Of you! Gathering these two for me. Thank you. Once we get back, I'll give you a good reward. As he's, he's like, I already have all the gold I would want. As she's like, well then, what would you like? Perhaps s something for for my pet. Oh, you have a pet? Yeah, it's a, it's a bird. She should be around in these forests, actually. 
Since you seem nice, I'm going to tell you, not my girlfriend who betrayed me. As, she, as the queen says, what? Now for me says, <clears throat> anyways, queen, I think there is a harsher discussion to be had here. Ah, uh, yes. I'm so sorry, shield hero. Could you please explain where you have been? We're all wondering. As the prince even wakes up for this. As after all he was pretending to sleep because he, he doesn't he doesn't like awkward conversations. Nalfumi's like Is that really what you wish? All of them nod and excited. Um their energized eyes sort of contrasted with his null reaction. Fine. But I don't tell me I didn't warn you. Why don't we start from the beginning? <laughs> the absolute beginning. Everything that I remember. Here we go. Small Teyasu says, Are you sure? This sounds like a sort of whole adventure by itself. As suddenly ruffles from the from the forest of some sort of beast inside. Now Fumi gets himself ready sort of grabbing onto a shield. However, he tells him to calm him down. Motayasu pu um, pu holds up his hands and says for her to calm down. As Philo, a bird, runs out of the out of the bush and runs straight to him. He says, come to daddy! As she immediately furrows into his, into his chest as they both hug each other tightly. Their happiness is unbound. She, she a, a passive is activated where both of them are, are slowly healed, gradually. By this time, it will only take five minutes for me to get back to full health. That's amazing. Wow. The power of love, eh? I guess it isn't. All not effortless. As they, as he starts hugging her tightly tighter until she almost backs away from him. They then look towards Nafumi as Philo twerks her head to the set to the left, staring at Nafumi's shield and his scars that led up. He says, Where were we? As you know Malfumi He's just like I was being summoned from my world. After hun uh, after ten years of military service, returning back as a war hero, but nobody gave a shit. I was soon jobless and homeless. I tried, you know. I ended up becoming a st construction slave, working away from my debt. And then I came here. I was being summoned as a hero. Such a hopeful destiny, is it not? But would you guess it? I was torn away from you guys, torn away from my destiny. You all went one way and I went another. It was that simple. When I landed, I landed as a test subject to a lich. He had torn me out of the sky to operate on me, alive. Within a week, they had made me the perfect super soldier, causing me to have super regeneration. And then began the tests, oh, the tests. You know, I never remembered much from the torture. Not much of it. I repressed it so hard. But till this point, I have only recovered maybe five hours of what I had gone through. You see, on my second month in there, they were going easy on me. They were getting used to me. They had dogs out in the front yard. All the people came by to feed them. Over one day, the dogs were not fed by the people. 
So what did they do? Well, they had a... They had a free body. In the name of... <laughs> testing it out, they said. To test it out. <laughs> Threw me out there and watched me run. I was bitten, torn down as they serrated through my flesh. You understand when you are killed by a dog, they don't just stop there. Uh, my consciousness was so strong at this point, I could survive losing all of my blood. But it will regenerate because of my strong heart. An infinite heart blood generator they they ripped into my organs two tackled me as they held me down with their long and jagged teeth as they tore through my torso they slowly picked out my organs taking out the the lungs then the heart my whole body was scattered around but because i was in a safe zone you realize that you can be destroyed. You can be killed. But you'd still... You'd regenerate... Everything. And you would remember... Everything. I... I couldn't... I couldn't stay sane as I watched them... Eat my lungs. They slurped down onto my, onto my long, long liver, and then, and then came my head. They tossed it around, playing with it, kicking it, serrating their, their jagged, just gross, harvested and unholy nails. The gnarliness that kept the gangrene that grew off of their very skin. And you know what they did after that when my body regenerated? I had no will to live. I had no will. I had no pride. What is the pride of a man who is degraded to nothing but an animal's food source and tortured for no other purpose than science? What is there? Tell me, Queen. Tell me! And you know what? I remember staring back at me on that fence as maggots started to grow into my rotten skin. The dogs fled away from me. Not because of me screaming. No, they were used to that by this point. But because a girl came along a track was staring at me, Queen. That was mine. Staring at me. Laughing at me. I waited two more months. I waited. I could sense somebody just out of reach for two months there, waiting. Someone so powerful, they could do what they wanted, save me, and yet they stood by. And then two others came. I got so good at sensing other beings, I never even focused on what was happening in front of me. They were transfusing my brain, don't you understand? They wanted to destroy me fully this time. At least they would end, my, end my suffering, but they couldn't even do that for me. They kept operating, even though I was watching them. They cut open every single part of my body until someone came and saved me. And you know what the humans did? You know what they did? Tell me what they did! Because I will tell you no longer. You, it's time that you know yourself. And those that are in your kingdom's actions and take responsibility. I am destroying your town, your kingdom, and all your progeny for one simple reason revenge. 
That is all. And as far as I'm concerned, you are just as much as fault at fault than them. You'd be lucky to make it out of here in the, um, by the morning. I suggest you should start running. It's now Fumi sitting in the cart. He opens up the door as once he says that he shut slams it shut, bellowing his cloak in the wind. His body, all stitched up, made sense now. The rough and tough hide must have been from regenerating so much. His fingers seemed to have been chopped off and then sewed back on after all this time. His smile seemed to only be that of a courtesy of a phantom. Like a hush in the wind, his pain was nothing more than a means to an end for everyone around him. His pain meant nothing to those who could save him from it. Genie ground, I watch him get a rich, huh? Remember when I said I hit a lick, huh? I don't really wanna fuck the bitch, what? Willie went and made another hit, okay, like Prada on my motherfucking kid, huh? Louie on my motherfucking hip, huh? Curry, how I dunk, no switch, hey, fuck it, gonna fuck that bitch, hey, if you ain't gon' fuck with me, you a dumb fuck, uh? Put up a hit, I'm gonna fill out one punch, uh? Look at my bank and I'm getting dumb rich, uh? And I'm gonna count it up till a hundred.